because both of you have a naturally high C, I think it's going to be harder for you to relinquish some of that stuff. Even though it bogs you down, it takes time. <laughs> Jessica just said you're a fortune teller. And like, that's like, that was our conversation yesterday. It's, it is our, <laughs> our number one issue is yeah, we 100%. love people, we trust people. But when it comes yeah. to anything we have our finger on, we don't want anybody else oh, touching brutal. it. It is so okay. difficult for us to let go of anything. Yeah. So, so what I'm seeing, cause I'm looking at your graphs and what I'm seeing is so that's, you both have a double whammy of this. Unfortunately, this is why this is happening. <laughs> that is both your high D and your high C at work. Okay. Building a successful real estate career requires you to adapt, pivot, and constantly master new skills. We're Katie and Daniel Steinfeld. We've built our own innovative brokerage. And in this podcast, we've assembled actionable tips and strategies that you can implement to take your business to its maximum potential. It's time to level up. Level up. Today, we are very excited because we've got a very special guest. Victoria Terrio is with us today. Um, Victoria is the owner and founder of Discover What Works. She's a certified DISC, EQ, and GIA analyst, as well as a certified team facilitator. Victoria specializes in personality profiling, coaching, and team building workshops. Her background in real estate sales, uh, team environments, and management allows her to bring a unique perspective of practical experience combined with theoretical knowledge. And we are really excited because I think this is such an important conversation for all realtors, um, whether they're just starting out or whether they've been in the business for a while, um, it, you'll, we'll probably get a lot of it out of it. So welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Katie and Daniel, for having me. Um, I'm super excited to be having this conversation with you today. Yeah. yeah, we are too. This is uh, this is for everybody who might not have been following along to this point. This is a very important follow up and broad discussion that follows us doing our own disc profile uh, <laughs> with you and getting to know um, a little bit more about ourselves. Maybe what we <laughs> kind of new, but can put into some context. But I think other rather than talking about that and before we get into everything else why don't we just for anybody who might not be aware of what a disc profile is yeah. could you tell us a bit about the work that you do and and why it's so important absolutely so two prong question so what is a disc profile so um i don't want to go super deep but just to give you an idea um, there's a lot of personality profiles. Sometimes people say, oh, I've done this one. I've done these colors. Well, DISC is the original. DISC has been here since 1928. It was developed at Harvard University um, by a man named William Marsden. And fun little fact about this guy, uh, what he is actually most famous for is developing the polygraph. So oh. that was him. So it's very interesting when you think of the connection between that and between you guys know, because you've done your profile between answering some questions and then getting a report back and going, Oh my gosh, this is me. So definitely, he was definitely onto something, right? So really smart guy. So this is the basis really of all assessments. It is still the most widely used assessment model in the world. And it's super relevant for work because you can pull specific reports on people that allow you to understand what's motivating them. So for instance, you know, let's say you're working with your realtor. So like what, you know, what's the best way to get through to this person, you know, not everyone is, is motivated by the same things. You know, some of us are more intrinsically motivated. Some of us are extrinsically motivated. That kind of stuff comes up in your profile. Um, you know, what you prefer, are you more of a people person? Are you more of a process person? All of these types of things come up. And so then it really becomes about, you know, fit to roll. So for instance, realtors, realtors are definitely overwhelmingly high eyes. That tends to be very common because eyes tend to be the ones who are very outgoing and people oriented and they love that. So with DISC, there are four distinct personality types. So there's four quadrants of behavior. So there's E for dominance, there's I for influence, there's S for steadiness, there's C for compliance. Do you guys want me to give you a high level of what each of those? Sure, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, so for high Ds and, you know, oftentimes when I'm doing this, I have slides, but I'll just tell you like the figure, I, I like to make it a little bit more real, a little more interesting with public figures. So 
For Heidi, the public figure I have is Serena Williams. Okay, so we have a champion. We have somebody who is driven, who is goal oriented, who is determined, you know, who's decisive, all of those kinds of words. These are risk takers. They're very intrinsically motivated. They've always got this kind of desire burning in them to just sort of crush goals and accomplish things. So you will find quite often, you'll find these are leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, and also quite often I do find it in sales profiles. Um, you know, usually the I is higher, but there's usually a D there as well. And so, you know, it's it's really an asset in a lot of ways to have a D because it really, really helps you, you know, move forward and, and get stuff done. The potential downfalls of having, you know, a high D is that sometimes people, especially people who don't have a high D, they sometimes see high Ds and think, oh my God, that person seems really strong and really blunt and, and, and that person then takes it personally and thinks, oh, maybe they don't like me or gosh, what have I done? When in fact, it's not that. So one of the things that I spend a lot of my time doing is explaining high D, putting it into context. And so it's really one of those things that you'll find that, you know, can often be misunderstood. So that's kind of like the high D, low D. Low Ds tend to be a lot more accommodating, cautious, collaborative. So mm -hmm. to high eyes, and again, all the realtors listening, Elizabeth, <laughs> yeah. this one wants to be you, right? This one. Well, when, we, when we put the question out there to the group, yes. there's a lot of high eyes out there. Yes. Yeah. So even in my database, I can tell you overwhelmingly, that's the most common one. It doesn't mean you can't do it. Let me just say that as a caveat. I don't want people to think, oh, I can't be successful in sales if I don't have an eye. It's not that at all. You're going to get there a different way. And we can talk about that. What it really is, is just you're drawn to it. So it's it's just that these people are drawn to it because of the fact that, you know, they're outgoing, they're gregarious, they're charming, they enjoy connecting with people. And that is something that obviously works super well in any kind of sales, um, but particularly in real estate sales as well. And then the opposite of that high eye would be your low eye. So a low eye people tend to be a lot more factual, logical, you know, they don't want to make an emotional decision. High eyes are so great at like wearing their hearts on their sleeves, they're talkers, they're storytellers. Sometimes that can be um, a pitfall for them though, because, you know, for a couple reasons, they sometimes feel sensitive if that doesn't come back at them. And really they could just be dealing with a low eye who just doesn't, you know, doesn't sort of interact that way. Sometimes they also have the tendency to maybe over talk and overshare. And then sometimes they might talk themselves out of a deal. So I sometimes have very coaching conversations with high eyes to say, hey, you have to know when to sort of turn that off and take a step back and listen to it. Um, and so there, so that can be a difference. And I know this is something that we'll probably talk about later on because there is a difference between the two of you with where your high, where your eye factor sits. So definitely one of you is more the um, impulsive sort of go with it kind of decision maker. The other one is definitely more the practical, rational, let's make sure all our ducks are in a row before we go forward. So that's just a little teaser there. <laughs> Anybody can um, guess if you want to, which one is which. Yeah, guess, <laughs> guess which one is, guess which one is which. See, yeah. <laughs> on that. Um, and then, so as so that the S factor is, is that, I'm sorry, I didn't give you an example. So for I, I have Oprah Winfrey as my example. Uh, obviously, I think that's sort of <laughs> self-explanatory, right? Mm -hmm drawn to her drawn to her vision her charisma for high s my my figure i have is uh sanjay gupta i have him right now so if for if anyone doesn't know him he's sort of been the doctor on cnn he's really being this steady calm informative voice throughout covid uh and so quite often you will find high s's are doctors or their teachers high s's are supporters they're listeners so they listen more than they talk mm -hmm. Realtors, these are often your toughest clients because you don't know necessarily what they're thinking and S's don't like to be rushed. They like to take their time. And so if you were like in a high D and you're trying to go in and close on a high S with your approach, you'll often scare them off because they need time to process. They need time to think. They do a lot of smiling and nodding. And this is what gets realtors in trouble. And mm -hmm. them, that nod is not a yes. <laughs> that nod, I'm listening processing, I'm going to think about it, and then I'll get back to you. So mm -hmm. quite often can get in the way there. Because typically, I will find a lot of realtors are low S's. And so what low S is really great at doing is having this high amount of energy. 
being very um, multitasking, being very uh, restless energy. So, oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I got to pivot. Now I have a building inspection. Oh, now I got to go back and show a house. So it kind of works really well in terms of that. So you will see that as a difference. And then C, C is our final factor. And for C, the example I have is Bill Gates as the public figure. C's are very much about knowledge, learning, understanding. C's want to make rational, factual decisions. They, the worst thing for a C is to make a mistake. So they really want to do their homework. They want to make sure that everything is, you know, logical, is precise. They can be perfectionists depending on how high that C factor is. Um, the opposite of that being a low C, low Cs, and I do see a lot of low Cs as sales as realtors, that does tend to be a lower factor. They're kind of like, ah, details, rules. Ah. <laughs> um, but what low Cs are good at, and it's important to know the strengths of the low factors, low Cs are very good at thinking outside of the box. They're really able to kind of come at something and say, huh, okay, I have this idea. And, you know, to a high C, they're very much in their box, right? They're very much, oh, we can't do that. No, that doesn't make sense. But a low C might say, hey, did we ever think about doing it this way? So it's very much a independent, autonomous behavior. It's very entrepreneurial. And so that's how that works in terms of that. So hopefully that that's sort of a little quick high level of the highs and lows of, of each of the factors. So I don't know if you guys, if anyone has uh, commented yet on their predictions, on their guesses yet. <laughs> no idea on that. Um, we've had a couple of questions come in that maybe, well, first of all, Nadia, I don't know if you remember Nadia Childs, she did. Yes. Uh, yeah, she's I an did. with us now. And uh, yeah, she did, I guess, I remember her sharing her profile with us. Yes. Really informative. So, um, and then J Jessica just made a comment that she just recently hired um, an admin and relied heavily on the DISC profile. Uh, something yeah. that I thought would be great based on the resume scored very differently than expected. And I think it would have saved me from disappointment. Uh, okay, absolutely yeah. true. So everything I was just sort of laughing and talking about with sales. So I was talking about a lot, of, we seeing a lot of high I's, we're seeing a lot of high D's, total opposite for administrators. Okay. So for, for any kind of sort of client care support for your admin, we're really at that point looking for high S's and high C's, because if you recall, you know, the S's are sort of the very calm. Okay. They'll calm things down. S's are very thorough. They will see something through to the end and mm -hmm. C's are very detail oriented. So they're not going to let mistakes happen. What I always say when I'm breaking up the factors, I'll say that I's and D's are really the starters. Okay. So they're the ones who have these great initiatives, these great ideas and say, I know, let's do this. You know, we should do this. And like, they're the idea people. They don't always stick around to do it, let me say. But the S's and C's, they're the ones who take it through the finish line. It's the yeah. S's and C's are the ones who are like, wait a second, how do we do this? And so S's and C's are quite often accused of, you know, not being innovated or, or, or resisting change. And what it really is, is they just need to wrap their head around it. They need another minute to go, hold on. Let me really think this through. And and because they're the ones implementing it, I got to make sure I know how to get there. So that's quite often a pattern we see. But in terms of uh, your, your sort of prototypical admin profile, you definitely ideally would want to see an S and a C in there, if not at least one or the other for sure. Mm -hmm. That That's a really good point. And the way that, and I guess just to close the loop on the letters for anybody who hasn't seen a profile, People yeah. score, I guess, different levels of each. So it's almost like a, a exactly. green graph. Mm -hmm. And yes. you can be high or low in more than one, right? Absolutely. Good point. Good point, Daniel. So we don't, like, it's rare to just have one. So I will tell you, like, about one in four people only have the one high factor. So we're talking about 25% of the population only has the one high factor. Mm. And then the other 25% actually has three high factors, which is really interesting. And those people are a little sometimes harder to kind of suss out or speed read. And then so half of us, 50% of us would have the two high factors over the two low factors. So exactly, quite often we're an amalgamation of these things. We're not just all of one or all of one another. So we have an interplay, right? So quite often with sales, I'll see the I, but then the D will be there too. So where the I might over talk and not know when to go for the close, the D kind of will come in and be like, okay, enough talking, now I'm going to close. So mm -hmm. it's fascinating to have that awareness for yourself personally, because you can kind of have that conversation with yourself, like, okay, Katie, like, let's time to dial up my eye because I'm going to be doing this and this. And then it's like, okay, time to tuck it in my pocket now and now bring out the D and let's get this thing closed. So it's handy for that. The other thing it's handy for is 
who is across the table from you? You know, who is the other person that you're talking to? Because if you're coming at it just with your profile and they have a different profile, that's not going to mesh. So there's, there's definitely techniques that you can employ to make sure that you are giving the information to that other person in the way that they need to hear it. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, is there any such thing as someone who isn't high in any or is high in all four or that doesn't exist? No. That doesn't exist. So if that were to happen, it's an invalid profile. So it doesn't work and it comes back, it'll come back invalid because there is a mechanism in the system for people who try to beat it. Right. <laughs> for people try to beat it because they are there if they feel pressure like they're being hired or something, sometimes that happens. But also in fairness, sometimes people really overthink it. And you two will remember that when I sent you out your instructions, I said, pick a time where you can be relaxed without distractions. I know that's a super challenge for the two of you. I honestly don't know how you have any time without distractions. But, <laughs> um, but that is what I say. And I always tell people, you know, put yourself in the work frame of mind and don't overthink it. Go with your gut reaction. Because I find if people are trying really too hard, sometimes they can get an invalid too. It, it rarely happens, but it has happened a few times. And that's really what it came down to is they were just so uptight about it and trying really hard and not doing it at an ideal time. Mm -hmm. But you probably 90%, maybe 95% of people get it back and say, Oh my God. <laughs> oh, do you know me? Do you have hidden cameras in my office? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you, um, what's something else? Are you a palm reader? <laughs> like, it's like, I wish I could take credit for that, but no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's so true. It's and it's it is. It's like a very accurate picture. And although sometimes you don't want to admit certain things about yourself, um, I, I, at the end of the day, deep down, I know. Like when you were going through my profile, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> not that I'm disappointed, but there's certain things. Like obviously, like we were talking that you know would be you know maybe more beneficial. But I think everybody has strengths and weaknesses, but being aware of them is probably 90% of the battle. And then you can kind of adjust from there. Absolutely. That's exactly you hit on you hit it on the head. So my whole philosophy and the way I run my business, because I often will have people say to me, Oh, I was like, hoping I would be a high eye. I was hoping yeah. I'd be like, how do I get there? And it's like, no, 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 you are who you are. And yes, we can all improve on things. We can modify behavior. But the whole point of this for me is leveraging your strengths. So what are the strengths? So let's say you wanted to be an ID and you're an SC. Let's look at the strengths of an SC and let's make sure that you are now in a position that everything you're doing, you're in the SC zone. So you are constantly setting yourself up to succeed. You are in the, you're in the position to do the things that energize you that invigorate you and that don't deplete you because when we're somebody let's say we're an id and so we're not into the whole paperwork and details if you're spending time being bogged down with that and that is not your jam you're going to be drained you're going to feel resentful and and most importantly you're not going to have the time for those crucial business building lead generating things that you're rocking as an id so you know it's not doing anyone any good so the whole point of this is understanding your strengths getting yourself into that zone and leveraging it and, and you'll take off successful with that. It's just really mind blowing how, when you're perfectly aligned to it, it makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. For sure. We were, we were just talking about that last night, actually, not, not necessarily saying like, Oh, this is my D speaking now or anything like that. But um, we are more or less like, you know, our profiles We're more or less in line with what we've been saying yeah. is expected. Um, and the paperwork and the routine and all that has been something we're trying to address and saying, do we need to find, we didn't say, do we need to go out there and find ourselves a good S right. But yeah. sort of, that's what we're saying. It's like, well, what's stressing us out right now or what's yeah. taking time that shouldn't be spent because it doesn't fit who we are. Yeah. So that's been really helpful. One more thing right. I do want to, I, I just want to bring up one more thing that really opened my eyes when we spoke, yeah. which is not being high in something isn't a bad thing either. And you were talking about that with me a lot too. And I think anybody, like you said, who's expecting, I thought I'd be a D or I thought I'd be a whatever, a low something has its own strengths attached to it as well. And that was really important. Also. Absolutely. I'm, yes. And I'm glad you drew attention to that because that's, you know, often if I'm talking to someone, it's almost one of the first things I say 
Um, nobody, like you said, nobody, we can't be high in all four. So everyone's going to have a high factor, low factor. So yeah, there are a lot of strengths in low factors. Like let's look at S for instance, being in real estate sales, having a low S allows you to pivot, allows you to be versatile, allows you to hop from thing to thing without feeling so super stressed. So there's an advantage of it. And conversely, you know, some of our high factors, there are things that aren't that great. So for instance, high Ds, yes, they're great at accomplishing things, you know, taking charge, doing things. But some of the pitfalls for having that high D is that they're misunderstood or they, you know, if they don't have a lot of self-awareness. They sometimes can come across like that quintessential bull in a china shop and people are like, oh, I'm scared. I'm intimidated. And really that person's just on fire and they're just ready to like, you know, take on tasks and get it done. But that can work against them if they're not aware of it. So so thank you for saying that, Daniel. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. So I think like we were thinking we want to definitely talk about this in the context of realtors working on teams or hiring an admin or what they what kind of help that they could use for their business based on their personality profile. So maybe we can do a bit of a case study with Daniel and I just given our profiles and kind of where you see the lack in <laughs> well, not the lack, but where, where we could probably use some help. <laughs> OK, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. And so let me just address, it's funny with you two, because you you are actually more similar than I would say a lot of married couples. I can say this because I, I do a lot of work supporting the real estate industry and you know there's tons of married couples and teams. So because of that, I've had this unique opportunity to really, you know, see how this dynamic works. And it's really one of those things where it's like at least nine times out of ten. The major difference in the profile. So I rarely see the same profiles, meaning same two high factors, same two low factors, or what, whichever breakdown. So I have to say, you two are pretty similar on things. So you do. You actually, I don't know if I want to. Do I want to reveal it? Did anyone take a guess at who's the person who's more? Difficult? We didn't get guesses, although we do know Jessica's score now. We have one more person who we who yeah. I, I can see it. It's, <laughs> It shows why we get along so well too with Jessica, but we, we have another score we can add to the mix. So yeah. <laughs> maybe actually for the next case study, we could even, Yeah. Okay. She, she had told us she just brought in an admin and maybe we could see if the disc sure. profile would yeah. go with her, okay. the Makes right sense. one. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so I just didn't want to give anything away. So did so. what was the guess for yours? Did Who guessed that someone was more impulsive? Did anyone do that yet? No, 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 one's no guessing. guesses, no, no. yeah. We're, we're getting no love, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> Is everybody being too polite? Everyone's too afraid. I know. They everyone's like, afraid. Yeah, mean? exactly. They're, no one's going to insult us. Yeah. All, All the right. letters are good. Yeah. All the letters it's are okay good. To be, it's, listen, it's okay to be impulsive and to act on your gut. So, okay. So, I'm going to spoil it then if you're thinking. <laughs> Tell us after if you agreed, if you think that's right. So, the main difference between the two of you. So, you do both have high Ds. You both have high Cs. So, that that is sort of brings about a similar way of thinking. Uh, which is good. It brings an easy compatibility. Um, you're both low S's, so you're both able to work at that pace I talked about, that really sort of quick pace. Um, the main difference between you is your eye factor. So Daniel has a very high eye, which would indicate that he's a little bit more of the impulsive kind of person. Um, and not just that, but like more of a if you know more of like the storyteller let's say so like if you're having a meeting he's going to be more the one to do the chit chat to maybe tell a story to have that approach and katie's going to be a little bit more like okay let's let's get to what we get to, right <laughs> totally <laughs> well, that never happens <laughs> yeah so it's pretty funny right how i can just look at the graphs and read this stuff and people are like oh my gosh okay yes so yeah, that would be that would be your dividing factor. But also let me say, you know, in terms of this case study, and if we talk about someone else, ideally, you know, we don't want to have the same profiles working together. Um, because, you know, what happens there is then we miss things, right? It's tunnel vision. Hey, Katie, what do you think? Yeah, Daniel, that's great. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then you've sort of talked yourselves into it and you've maybe missed the pitfalls or the, you know, what are the blind spots? What could we have made a mistake here? And so ideally I'll tell people, you know, yeah, you do want to sort of hire, if you're on a team, you do want to have a nice representation of all the factors and not only that, but the right fit for the right role. And so 
you know, saying that um, it's good that you have the difference with the eye because that there is a difference. So there is someone where I'm going to say, let's say Katie might be a little bit more skeptical about some things. And then maybe Daniel might be like, hey, you know what? Let's not overthink it. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a chance. Um, so that's a good yin and yang. That's something you want to have, too, because, again, you're not tunnel vision. You're not doing it. You're bouncing that off of one another. You have that as an inherent difference. Now, in terms of if you were bringing somebody on and in terms of help, there's, I'm going to say a little thing that's interesting for you too, which is very different for, let's say, typical realtors. Now, the fact that you are also broker owners, this kind of makes sense for that. But because both of you have a naturally high C, I think it's going to be harder for you to relinquish some of that stuff. Even though it bogs you down, it takes time. Oh, yeah. Jessica just said you're a fortune teller. And like, that's like, that was our conversation yesterday. It's, it is our, <laughs> our number one issue is yeah, we love people, we trust people. But when it comes yeah. to anything we have our finger on, we don't want anybody else oh, touching brutal. it. It is so okay. difficult for us to let go of anything. Yeah. So, so what I'm seeing, because I'm looking at your graphs and what I'm seeing is so that's you both have a double whammy of this, unfortunately. This is why this is happening. <laughs> that is both your high D and your high C at work, okay? The high C is all about, oh, I'm really good at this and this needs to be perfect and I can do it perfectly. Yeah. He is kind of like, I'm in charge. I'm in charge of things. I'm autonomous. Like I do whatever. So both of those, for you guys having both of those together is really tough for you to kind of then say, oh, okay, here you go. Because, and truthfully, when you have a high C, usually you do you do a good job at things like this. Like it might frustrate you, you might have a million other things to do, but you know that you can do it and you can do it well. So it feels painful to let it go because C's can be a little bit of a control freak. It can be a little bit of, oh, I don't really want to send that out into the world. So I will tell you that it, it will feel like a struggle for you a little bit if you want to bring somebody in sort of administratively. I would 100% recommend a high S in that profile. I do think a C it is really pretty crucial, you know, in terms of the details and especially with the two of you because you two are detail oriented. But I would say that an S would be a really nice balance because both of you have a low S and, you know, High S's are really sort of that steady, calming, okay, all right, we'll figure it out. The only thing that I would say as a heads up <clears throat> is that some of the things that sometimes happen with S's, the dynamics, people often think it's D, that's the big divider, you know, the high D, low D. I have to say quite honestly, in my experience, it tends to be S and, and that's S on a team because you're working at a different pace, okay? And so low S's kind of think that they can accomplish, let's say, 10 things in a day and high S's think they can accomplish about five. And so you really then have to kind of bridge that difference. And when you understand why it's taking long, here's the whole crux behind DISC and communicating with each other. It, we can't read minds, but once we understand each other's DISC factors, we now know the intention that goes behind the behavior we're seeing. So often we're misunderstanding it, but now we know, oh, he's a high S, she's a low S. Okay. So with low S's, they are going to take a longer time, but that's because they have kind of done a whole SWOT analysis in their head. They're like, okay, you know, how did, what takes me from A to Z? How am I going to get there? And so they're really putting a lot of thought into it. And it's so important for them to finish something and finish it properly before moving on to something else. So low S's like yourselves might be like, okay, like, wow, that's not done yet. Like, okay, what's taking so long? So that could be, so then you could be impatient. Then what happens is you're impatient. And then you start putting pressure on the S. Now I've already said S's hate to be rushed. They don't want pressure. So this is where it becomes tricky. And then just so you know, from, from their vantage point, the high S is looking at you guys as low S's and going, whoa, these people are scattered. They are frantic. Uh, yeah, I see them doing 10 things, but are they really doing them right? And are they fully finishing any of them? Mm -hmm. so that is kind of the quintessential understanding between the two of them. That's where the disconnect happens. So understanding where you are on that S scale is really, really important in terms of managing expectations more than anything, I would say, and then communicating it. Yeah. And our admin is um, 
she's on maternity leave right now, but I'm just thinking like, even when we first started, we hired her on, like we had no idea. Like we, and we told her, we were very honest with her at first saying that like, we don't know what your, what the role is going to turn out to be and all the tasks and that kind of thing. But honestly, like the things that we've put her through <laughs> and just like yeah. the things that we've abandoned after she's done it. And like, just if we would have known that and been able to like, even, well, first of all, I want her to take the test because I'd be curious to, to actually yeah. see who she is, but um, yeah. to be able to talk about it more openly, like, you know, this is my low C or my, my low S right now, like just yeah. really struggling. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's, that's exactly right, Katie, is that's, you know, I, I will encourage teams and I follow up with them after. And just like you two were telling me at the beginning of this, before we went live was just how you're using the language a little bit more, you know, Katie, you're kind of joking with Daniel about his high eye, but this yeah. happens. And so, and 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 the, the feedback is, and this is the whole point of having a neutral platform. So we all have disc profiles, so we're all on the same level because we all have one. One isn't better than the other. They're all just who, what they are. And then instead of saying, instead of making it about Katie and Daniel, it's about, oh, it's the high eye that Daniel has and it's the low eye that Katie has, or it's the high D that Katie has, you know? So it, it's always those jokes like, oh my goodness, can you maybe dial down your eye today, Daniel? Cause like, wow, we don't have time for all these stories and all this chit chat. <laughs> and you know, and then conversely it could be Katie. Wow. Could you dial down your D because you are in like go mode and like, I need a breath here or something. So it's, one of those things that you almost can kind of put it to the side and kind of blame it on the profile a little bit and it depersonalizes it it takes the sting out of it that that sometimes people would have and it just really facilitates open communication i've got so many questions <laughs> and uh, maybe it's my eye who just wants to talk a lot but, <laughs> but, but, gee, imagine that <laughs> but I, I'll, I'll start with one that I, i'm going to try to keep it on the path that we're on because i might take it in the wrong direction <laughs> if i start asking too many but okay. when we were talking about even our situation where an s might serve us well in, in some respect if we could get over the understanding of pace and all that yeah do you find that for a team or for people who need support in addition to just filling a gap that might be there, it's helpful to have something that kind of bridges the gap as well. Like you had mentioned, if we had someone who was an S and a C, yeah, it might be better than someone who's just a high mm -hmm. S. So is that a common way to look at it when someone's trying to fill what's missing or not necessarily? No, I think, I think that's a good point. And again, like we talked about, if we're breaking it down, only one in four people only have the one high factor. Um, and so when that happens, you know, that's a little bit more of a challenge. Ironically, it does tend to be eyes that just have the one high factor and they're usually like the really high eye and that's why we find them in sales. Um, I would, I feel like mostly with S's and C's, it's very, very common for them to have that together. So yes, your point is well taken in terms of should there be sort of that intermediary factor. So I think ideally for you two, Yes, your person has a C, your person also has a high S. The C is connecting so you know, hey, this person has the standards we have. They are detail oriented, they are process oriented. So we don't have to worry about sending this off into the world and it's not gonna get done the way we wanted it to be done. So yeah, that C is the bridge sort of to that S that you don't have. So yeah, that's a really good observation. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we'll come we do have question. questions, yeah. yeah. So I want more okay. at the moment. <laughs> Lower that eye. <laughs> Dial it down. Yeah. Listen, your eye has not, you know what? Your eye has not been super apparent, I have to say. So for, you're for what it's worth, you can't see my knee that's chattering under the table. <laughs> 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 but but you know what? Like I think like we talked about in our in our discussion, I guess maybe a high I, high C is not that common. And to, or was it an I and C that's not common to be? Yeah, together? so so good point. So what we talked about, and sometimes when I'm doing a workshop, I'll have a graph and it's got a bunch of different arrows, okay? And so it shows which ones have things in common and which ones kind of are polar opposite. So um, to that point, yes, I's and C's are pretty opposite. The one that is the most opposite is D and S um, because, I mean, they both are. So first of all, let me just say why. So they can, where do they connect? So um, having an I and a D, they connect in the sense that they are both externalized behaviors. So, you know, when I would have my slides up, I'll show you, you can see eyes are like hand talkers. There's a lot of this. D's tend to do a lot of 
you know, pointing for emphasis or being passionate or like maybe put, you know, banging their hand down or just doing that. Those behaviors are easy to speed read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm picturing her doing all that, like just running around and <laughs> punching oh, her. Over. That's so funny. So very, those two are very externalized behaviors. So they have that in common. Whereas S's and C's are more internalized behaviors. So it's harder. Remember I said really tough to read an S because they're doing the nod. C's are like usually often, you know, not a lot of eye contact, often taking notes if it's important. So you're again going, well, I don't know what I'm seeing here. So that's where those two things have in common. But now these things have in common with other stuff. So D's, so D's and C's now also have things in common. And why is that? D's and C's are both task oriented. They are both focused on getting tasks done. I's and S's also have things in common. Why is that? They're more people oriented. The I's are more the talkers. The S's are more the listeners, but it's still about people. It's still about that. So that leaves us with where do they not intersect? So they don't intersect at the I and the C and they don't intersect at the D and the S. And sometimes that can be, it's funny, it can be a strength and it can be a challenge. Where it's a strength is you have a foot inside two doors, right? So things that I's usually struggle with, the C is there to fix it. So the over-talking, the over-sharing, the C kind of comes in and it's like, uh-uh, that's enough. And then for the C, where the C sometimes is that person who's, you know, too many like serious and logical and people aren't getting a read on them, the I can come in and save that. Um, so, so really good for that. However, it can be a challenge a for the person to kind of just be like, Oh, I'm a little bit of this. I'm a little bit of that, but also for people trying to understand them because there's sometimes like, Oh wow. Like yesterday you were super like fly by the seat of your pants. And today you're like, checklist. It's like, so it can be challenging. And then I would tell you that honestly, and this is the rarest combination I see is a D and an S together. So, yeah. So D's push ahead. D's are the doers, right? D's get things done. They, they're they decisive. They take action. They move ahead. S's are the thinkers, the processors, the mm, let me think about it, the supporters. So when you have two of those in a profile, same thing. They kind of save each other a little bit, but it can be very contradictory. I work with a client. I think I might have told one of you this story. And he's a broker and he has that rare combination of a D and an S. And when we did his profile and we, and we also did a facilitation with his sort of his right hand, his lead administrator, office manager, she was like, thank you God for this. Because she said it explains like, and she's worked with him for 10 years. She's like, this explains everything because I see this polarizing behavior and I don't know what to do with it. So she's now taken to when he comes in in the morning goes, Hey, good morning. Um, am I talking to the D today or am I talking to the S <laughs> structure her day? Because she, it was so contradictory, she couldn't figure it out. And just even for his own self-awareness, why he would doubt things like, wow, why did I make that decision? And then 20 minutes later go, oh, I don't know about that. I'm going to go change my mind. So it's really helped him strategize. He kind of, he kind of tucks his D away now, what he does. And he, he uses his S to go, let me process it. I really feel like saying X, Y, and Z, but I'm going to hold back. I'm going to use my yes to process it. And then when I'm really sure my D is going to strive into action and get it done. Mm, that's interesting. Jessica brings up a good question. She um, asked, and I know we've talked about it before as well. Can your profile change over time and, yeah. and how does it adjust as you get older and take on yeah. different roles? Yeah. Yeah. Really good question. So when you do a disc profile and Katie and Daniel will have seen it, there's actually at the back page, there's three graphs. So, so the main graph that we work with, which 80% of the info comes from, that is you, your self image, that's you over the course of time. It doesn't tend to change dramatically. It could, you know, some of your factors could stretch up. Some of them could come down a bit. It tends to be you. The other two that it measures is your workplace. So what you feel you have to be doing right now to get the job done and your stress graph. So what happens when your back's against the wall and you're stressed? How do you behave? So we do see situational changes all the time in those two. So if you did it in a year, your work graph, your stress graph could look different. Chances are the one on the right, your self-image graph tends to stay true to you. I do mine once a year just to check in. Um, my regular graph stays very similar, but uh, you know it's amazing even to me still after all these years, my stress graph and my work graph will show variances and it's completely of the moment. It's a snapshot in time. It's showing what's happening. I will give you one exception to this rule. So if you are a high D already, and as you get older and as you get more senior in your career, more successful, take on more responsibilities, your D will continue to rise. D's never go down. 
Heads <laughs> <laughs> up if you think you're yeah you think you're ID and you're taking on more roles, you're gaining more confidence, your D will end up getting higher and higher. So that is the one little pattern that happens. That makes sense. But yeah. it's a good question. And it can change if you're in, you know, especially if you've had like if you've had a major career switch or something like that, or something dramatic like that has happened, you can see some of your factors switch because we're all adaptive. We have adaptive um, factors. And again, without you having the benefit of seeing the graphs, if your factors are sort of mid center, so they're, they're, they're kind of on a midline, it's easier for you to kind of dial them up or dial them down versus someone who let's say is a high eye and their, their dot at the graph is like just at the top of the page, like good luck. Like that's not changing. Right. Um, Ones that are closer to the center line, you can modify them accordingly to circumstance. That makes sense. Interesting. Um, yeah. I've got I've got some questions about S's because okay. S seems to be like with this audience and with ourselves, it's a consistent low factor for most of the people who are watching this. And then oh, yeah. okay. Um, you mentioned like what the, the characteristics of an S are and that they might take their time. They're going to work a little bit slower, slower, more meticulous. Yeah. In the absence of a disc profile, though, yeah. if you have someone who's slowly working or maybe not getting things done, I guess you could have the, the confusion between are they an S or are they lazy, right? <laughs> it's, and true. it's true. I, what I would say what the confusion could be or what you could do is I think the quality of their work. I think if you if you look at it and you go, okay, that took a long time, but oh, wow, like they put a lot of thought into that. There was a lot of factors. There was a lot of that going on. Um, I think that would probably be a good indicator uh, of where that time is being spent. The biggest piece of advice that I would give, um, you know, again, is in terms of the realtors is while a lot of you are low S's, you know, if you look at the stats worldwide, it's interesting. Apparently, according to the stats worldwide, S is the most common factor. So what that tells mm -hmm. us very often, if you're trying to, if you're meeting a prospect, you're doing a listing presentation chances are at least one of those people could be an S. And this is where I always find that realtors run into trouble. I've even had people say to me, oh, you know what, Victoria, I just don't work with C's and S's because, you know, I don't, I don't get them. They don't get me. And I'm like, what? You're giving up on this much of the population? Like, why would you limit yourself? Learn to just, you know, present the information in a way that's palatable to them. It doesn't mean you can't work with them. So an example would be, so you're doing your listing presentation, right? You're getting that famous S nod back at you, you know, and it could be a smiley face too. It doesn't have to even be neutral. It could be smiling and nodding, but it's probably a slow nod. And so instead of being like, okay, so, you know, it seems like everything's in line. Like, you know, let's get your house listed. Again, you're going to put them in a full blown panic. If you say that, here's what you would say instead. Okay. You know, I've given you all the information. You know, you let me know if you have any questions and you're noticing now that I'm slowing my pace, even as I'm saying it. Mm -hmm. so if you have any questions, take your time, think about it. And when you're ready, you call me and, you know, we'll set something up. So what you've now done is you have given them space. You have given them permission to breathe. And ironically, that person is going to end up making their decision faster because you've given them that space. Hmm. Or like okay, well, this market's really hot, you know, and stuff is going, whatever. They're just going to be like, yep, yeah, no, nope, I'm out. Like, I don't like that pressure tactic at all. So that would be my biggest piece of advice to low S's when dealing with someone who you think is a high S, um, you know, and they're, they're tough nuts to crack because they are listeners versus talkers. You have to draw them out, not in an aggressive way though. But what I will say, once you do draw them out, you've given them their space to breathe S's are supremely loyal. So once you've cracked through that and you provide good service, they're your clients for life. They're your clients who will tell their friends. So they are the people that you're going to end up getting repeat referral business from. So it is worth the effort. A hundred percent. Yeah. I can, I'm just thinking of all my past clients that have referred me so many times and I'm like, they're, they are S's to like, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So it, it makes total sense. So I had a couple of questions and I'm trying to think which one I want to ask first. Um, so with like, I think a lot of times we go, especially into a listing presentation and there's some clients, and I don't know if it's like high D's, but they want, they, they basically want to tell you how it's going to work or they believe they know the right way to do things. Yeah. And so 
you obviously don't want to offend those people. But at the same time, I've seen for myself and for other people that if they start giving in to how people like how people are dictating, it just yep. will blow up eventually because yep. you have to get in there with your professionalism and your experience at some point and tell them how it needs to work. So exactly. how do you go about kind of finessing that um, when you're dealing with somebody like that? Yeah, that's a great question. And you're right. And that is the person who will do it as a high D. Okay. <laughs> the interesting thing about it is as much as D's are that way, D's are very impressed with confidence back at them. Okay. So as long as it's done in a respectful way, like, oh, I hear you. Great point. So, you know, you're doing that kind of thing. But if you st make a really bold statement, like, yeah, well, you know what? Like this has been, you know, this has been my farm area. This has been my neighborhood for 10 years. And I can tell you that, a, B, and C, and this is the way it's done, and this is the case. So have your have your facts ready, but present them in a very, um, you know, you let them say their thing, but then you also, at a certain point, stop them because you can't let them run the show. If they run the show, then they're that's what's going to be in their mind. You kind of stop them after they've said their thing, you've acknowledged it, and then you move in with your confidence statements because Ds respect confidence. Ds are taken in by confidence. So if you say that, hey, look, I've sold X amount of properties in this neighborhood, I'm telling you emphatically, this is the pattern I see. This is the trend I see. And so then they're kind of like, oh, okay. This, okay, this person knows their stuff. Um, okay, cool. And so while we're at it, I'm just going to point out an interesting thing because, you know, there's this interesting dynamic with C clients too. So it, it's almost the same, but I want to point out the nuance. It's really important, the difference in the nuance. So the, it's the confidence with the D, right? So when you say that confidently to a D, they're like, okay, they're paying attention. If a C is sort of coming back at you and a C will have a lot of questions, I don't know, well, what's that stat? What did that sell for? What did, you know, very, very factual, logical, will never make an emotional decision. If you say to a C really confidently, all those things you said to a D, it still won't be good enough. Mm. It won't be good enough though. If you say it and you have the information to back it up. So instead of saying, I've sold all these houses, I'm in this neighborhood, you go, here's the data. The data indicates that this is the case. The information proves this, the stats prove it. So now that C doesn't have to be taken in by someone who's blowing out promises that they don't know if they can believe. That person is a conduit now to that information. The information is key for a C. But if you are the person who's passing that information onto the C, you know, by proxy, you are now that expert. So that's really important when you're when you're dealing with the C. That's the difference. With the C, make it about the information. With the D, make it about you and your level of confidence. Got it. Okay. So the difference would be the C would not be so outwardly confident about like what they they're just more asking you the questions. Yes. The C will have a lot of questions. Okay. I always tell people, please do your homework if you think your person is a C because they will have done it like crazy. So make sure you at least have it at the same level and be prepared to say to them, here's the stat. So for all the, all the people who love to do spreadsheets and tons of information, please do that for your high C's. Your high C's will love it. If you do that for a high I, nope, you're going to lose them. You can have it all there. But what I suggest is make it pretty, have some nice graphics, kind of have it there if you want, scroll through the salient points, but really, with an eye, it's going to be about the connection. What is the connection you're making with them? What is the chit chat you're having? They are going to place a lot of faith in that relationship. Whereas a C, it's like, eh, they're nice, but I need to see, you know, show, show me the information. I can't make up my mind without that info. A certain rock, paper, scissors element to it. But the difference is paper can also be scissors in this when used the right way. It's just all these different tools that when you understand who, like you said, who you're across the table from. Yes. You employ the right tools and also dial up or dial down what you are in an appropriate way to deal with it. Absolutely. So and that, that way you're forming that connection. So don't be like that realtor that says to me, ah, I just don't deal with S's and C's. Like what, you're, you're completely giving up on so many potential customers. Why would you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question that came up, which is really good, just kind of, um, building upon understanding who you're working with. Are there any questions that people can ask on the phone while they're booking the appointment just to kind of get a better understanding of the type of person they're going to be walking into and presenting to? 
Yeah, like, so it's interesting when I'm doing talks, I will have um, observable behaviors and I kind of had to do a little um, cheat sheet and I made it COVID friendly because a lot of times I would have said stuff like with eyes, you want to like engage them in person, ideally, while well, I'm like, okay, like, we can't do a lot of that. So, you know, that would definitely be more on the phone, that would be, you know, video chat. So even ways that even if they reach out to you, so for things like if you notice that, if you're sending a text or an email and like they're always calling you back, they're a talker, like they're, that's, that's an eye. Eyes, eyes would prefer that. Um, you know, eyes and S's more so on the phone actually, um, but mostly eyes. So if you're, if you're, you know, calling them and you're asking them questions and you're asking them like a very specific question and they get off track and they start telling a story and they do whatever, they're an eye. <laughs> mm. You're asking them questions and they are bullet point quick answers to you very quick very decisive they're probably a d if you're asking them the questions and they are sort of qualifying your question and then questioning you back they're a c and if they're sort of reluctant and cards close to their chest and like mm, i don't know i'd have to think about that that's an s so, you know, little, little things like that, you know, I have these resources that I have when I work with people that I share with them. And it's literally about that. It's a little cheat sheet and it'll say stuff like, you know, talking to this person, you need details, talking to this person, not interested in details, you know, uh, make sure you have a warm up with this person, ask them how the weekend was, is the dog okay? What happened at the vet? It's like all of that. If you do that with a D or a C, they're kind of just like, okay, and when are we getting to that? <laughs> right? So true. Because <laughs> I try to bring up my eye when I go into listing presentations yes. sometimes yep. as well. But a lot of, not a lot, but like I'd say half the time, I'm not working with an eye. So I can see that like they're like, why, I, I, why are you asking me about my kids or my, yeah. you know, my weekend? Like yeah. we're, we're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose, right? Yeah. That's, that whole, that's that DC being task oriented. Okay, we're here. Let's get it done. Yeah. And I, it's just like, oh, yeah. But like, we got to chat first. We got to get to know each other. Like, that's so important. So that's exactly it. We got to just figure each other out. And there's so many connections that are being missed and lost, you know, along the way when people don't recognize that. And that's why I say, don't, don't give up on different personality types. Just understand it and use it to your advantage and be able to break through and make those connections. It's so powerful. Yeah. Absolutely. And then the, there's also situations where you could be often in the room with a married couple, for example. Mm. And like you said, a lot of the times they're not. Like you said, it's not that typical that they're exactly the same. And our experience is usually you've got the conservative one or the thinker and you've got the outgoing one. Yeah. You've got to work the room in a way to get both of them to buy in. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. and yeah, the question is, how do you deal with that? Do you how bounce do from one to the next or do you find some sort of profile that will speak to both in the same sentence? Because that's hard to do, right? Yep. So here's a really interesting tip. This is something that I've learned and that I always share with people. When you're in that situation and let's pick the polar opposites just to make it easy. So let's say, you know, the husband is a D, the wife is an S, let's say, okay? So, you know, you're talking to them and the husband is firing off questions, making strong statements, and then you're talking to him and you're also looking at the wife and she's either nodding or just, you know, neutral expression or, you know, not, you know, holding back a little bit. So I would always say, you know, you don't want to ignore the S. So you definitely want to meet the D and meet the D confidently. Like I always say, come back at it, eye contact, direct, whatever. And then I would also, every time I do that kind of turn and do sort of an encouraging nod or smile at the S to make sure you're still in this, right? You're still in this conversation. The D will kind of do blah, blah, blah. And in your mind, you're thinking, okay, this D is running the shot. So, you know, maybe I want to tailor things more to them. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Again, meet them, be confident, do all of that. And then what my advice would be is afterwards, that night or the next day, you then send an email or a phone call, but you send the email and, and, and what you're doing in that point is you are really speaking to the S in that point. Okay. So you don't want to keep out the D the D can be there, but the D will kind of look at it and skim it and be like, eh, okay, whatever. <laughs> and the S will read it and the S will process it and hear it. And here's the interesting thing. One of the words I might not have said when I described S, S's are tenacious, they're persistent. 
What's another word for that? They're stubborn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can tell you S's are quiet, but you know what? Quite often S's are the ones behind the scenes. They don't let go on things. So let's say the D is like, no, no, we're doing this. We're going in at this price. We're doing whatever. That S will keep after that D. Really? Did you think about this? And the next day, oh, but what about this? And so if you've tailored everything to the D and you've, you've left the S in the dust, you've missed out because I can tell you it's very surprising to people, but often the S gets their way. The S is persistent and they keep at it. And that's what ends up happening. Totally. Like the number of times there's not an agent who hasn't had a situation where they've left feeling like they nailed the presentation only to find out a day or two later that the person who wasn't talking said they didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah. that they influenced the partner who that person thought was running the show. Right. And it's not the case. So S's are very, that's the thing. S's are very much behind the scenes, like kind of the puppet master behind the scenes. Like I'm not giving you anything. I always say they're the best poker players, right? The cards are at the chest, like not giving you anything, giving you poker face. You think you're talking to my partner, who's the D, who's calling all the shots. And so it seemed you just let me work on that D after you left. And now I'm going to say this. And then tomorrow I'm going to say this. And then the next day, because again, S's are persistent. They don't give up. So that is very, very, uh, that tends to be a very interesting piece of advice that most people have gotten wrong, have misread. And of course you would, right? If you didn't know that, it would just, it would make sense to you, but never underestimate the yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if, and I know we, we always talk about when we first go into a listing presentation, oftentimes I'll start with the tour. And I, I wonder if that, it w I, I think that would be helpful because at least at that point, you're kind of gauging like how they're talking and maybe- yeah. Yeah, so maybe just continue with that. And maybe that's a tip for other people out there that um, are wondering how to structure their listing presentation. Like as much information you can gather ahead of time, because like I could just imagine sitting at a table and then I'm trying to think, okay, like which one are you? And, you know, so, and I'm sure it becomes more naturally once you get, you know, into it a little bit more. Definitely. And so what I always will recommend to people is, so for your existing clients, go into your CRM or your database Think about what you know about them and plug it in. Like, I think this person is a high D or a mix of whatever. And so the next touch point you have with them, you're like, oh, right, D and I. Okay, so that is, you know, I, I'm going to pick up the phone instead of messaging them because I'm just, if I haven't said this, don't send eyes, long emails, they won't read them. FYI, it just won't happen. <laughs> you want to be, um, you know, you want to call them. You want to do that. If it's a D, oh, right, D, I'm going to get right to the point and I'm just going to, you know, I might have all this stuff to say, but if I can just work it out and give them three bullet points, perfect. Or, oh, if it's a C, oh man, here's the person I'm going to send the long detailed email to because they want it and they want to read it. So have that in your database so that the next touch point, you're like, yeah, okay, that's what I know about that person. And then going forward, new people look at those observable behaviors. So, oh, when I met with that person or I talked to that person, I could tell they were typing away on their computer and they were saying, yeah, but I see that such and such sold for whatever. That person's a researcher, probably that person's a C. So put into your thing, new prospect, I think this person's a C or vice versa. So you can really, really kind of become a little detective and pick up on all these, on these cues and then take them and put them in there and then use that knowledge going forward. Mm -hmm. That's great. I, I, before I'm, I'm going to invite everyone to ask any questions you've got because we are approaching the hour mark here and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. And in that time, could you let everybody know how they can find you and all the things that you offer? Because sure. like we can, we can say from experience, it was awesome yeah, working okay. with you and going to, and it's still awesome. Now we're learning more every time we talk to yeah, you. Yeah, like it's, it's like the immediate's great, but like yeah. it's all the after and what kind right. of really start about yeah, it, it's know. like the onion with the layers right that's how it was for me then yeah. get into it and I still am like wow you're the more you learn the more you realize oh I didn't know that much to begin with and now I really know right so thank you so um my company name is discover what works uh I'm on Instagram as that at discover what works and uh at Facebook you can get me at uh Victoria at Victoria Disc uh, my email is discoverwhatworks at gmail.com. So lots of Googling discover what works will probably pull it up. Yeah. Um, or, you know, like I said, I, I have a personal Facebook account too. But anyway, like that, you can you can reach out to me. I'm happy to have a chat with you, of course, to talk about, you know, and then you also said services. So I help people with hiring. So first of all, if you're 
you know, if you're either a broker owner or you're a team member and you want to bring on an admin or a new team person so I can help you with the hiring process. So like screening profiles, like what's the typical profile, then the orientation process. So like now you have this person, but how do we make sure the two of you, uh, you know, get off on the right foot, communicate effectively. So then that's something else that I do. And then of course, if you're like, you know, a larger team or something, I do team workshops where we structure the team. We have a look at, you know, how everything is. And we look at the, the interesting thing with when you have a team is not only do you each have your own individual profiles, but now your team has a profile. So I merge all the profiles together. You have a team profile. So it says, here's the, here is the personality of this team. Here are the strengths. Here are the challenges. And then what we can do is we can really create goals around those and making sure that strategically, okay, we're aligned, we're going forward this way. And we're also able to, you know, watch out for any of those pitfalls that might happen and it's a really good way of making sure your goals are in alignment with the behaviors and, and personalities on your team. That's perfect. Well, thank you. There is You're one welcome. Question. Last Jamie. question. Yeah. Um, so uh, she, uh, just wondering if you've had people fill out profiles or personality profiles, like other agents have filled out profiles or actually, I guess, ask their own clients. Wait, let me actually read the question because yeah. I'm like Adley right <laughs> now. I'm like making this up as I go. <laughs> Have you ever had clients fill out a profile test prior to meeting them? Um, I would say good luck to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be awesome if you could. I think it would be awesome if you could, but I don't I don't think too many people are able to do that. Yeah. I think they most people would probably be like, what? what is this yeah yeah, yeah. But i think definitely like knowing about it is is good and, and and slowly getting more comfortable with identifying things and working alongside you with different you know things within your own business i think will just right. allow you to pick up a lot quicker with other yeah people. so so when when people um like if they want to use me if they want to do a disc with me for themselves what happens is not only do i so we also have a consultation so you would get your reports and some of the things that that includes is you know if you're a salesperson uh, not only do you get your full report but you also get something called a sales audit which shows you what are your strengths so your natural opener your natural closer or customer service or those kinds of things so you you would get all of that also though you get a consultation with me where i i'm able to you know talk to you about it in in my own words and at that point that's then where i would um, pull up sort of that little cheat sheet and then that would be yours afterwards. I would give that to you. And it's literally one of those things where you're like, Oh, I D S. Okay. This is what I do. And you kind of just look for these behaviors. I give you a bunch of slides that shows you what the behaviors are so that you can learn to pick up on them. So, so that's really where, where, where that would lead you. That's helpful. That's great. Wonderful. Well, thank you. It thank you. Great to chat with you and uh yeah we'll make sure to put this up i mean this is going to be a recording on the group but also it'll be our uh, podcast that will be released on monday so if people want to listen in the car or wherever cooking whatever yeah. they're doing then they can do that <laughs> Sounds I, good. I can say you're the first person ever i've appreciated being called a dick by so that's <laughs> so, so that's good so thank oh, you for that. Goodness. i let's clarify i did actually say that <laughs> no 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 she, she's never called no yet like for, for everybody that's not what happened those are just my letters not in that order you, know, you do have a combination of those letters however if we really say it phonetically it would be id idica <laughs> yeah okay that's fair that's let's fair. be fair let's be Take fair back. Yeah. You, you've never and never would call me well yeah no I, I i don't think i hope not we're friends but no it's uh yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's been a very eye-opening experience, which is really strange because these are things that, when you think about it, we know them about ourselves. We just yeah. never know it in that context. So yeah, so true, so true. Yeah, great. Well, thank, thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed working with you and doing your profiles, and of course, doing this was super fun. So thanks so much. I really appreciate it. I had fun. We'll talk thank to you, you later. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. Level up, 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 level up,